Hey everyone, it's Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. And I got a lot of feedback from uh, this post that I put up of this really fun class that I did with my students at Riley Street where we cut the internal piece of um, a tile and did a tangle on both sides and then you hang it and it spins, which is really, really fun. You can see I'm kind of playing around with it. Um, I ended up putting some beads on the end of it in a really nice loop so that you could put it up somewhere. Um, and so I heard from a lot of people saying that they wanted to take this class. So here we are. Um, part of this class was part of Inktober. And so you'll recognize some of the uh, the tangles here. I think this is called J. Louise, um, and then Zonked, of course, and then uh, Sindhu, which I've been mispronouncing all over the place, so I apologize for that. Um, and then, of course, we've got our sand swirl in here and a few tipples to boot, and then we've got some really nice shading to go with. So let's talk about this class here and what you're going to need. You're going to want to have um, either a Pigma pen or your Micron PN pen. Those are my favorites. I really like working with them because you can uh, press as hard or as light as you like to make the lines that you want. So one of these is going to be great. And then, of course, you are going to need a good puddle pen and I am pretty uh, partial to this new uh, Faber Castell pit pen. I'm really enjoying it. It's a brush pen which is great so that when you are puddling it really makes it go quickly. The other thing that I like about this pen is that it is waterproof. Um, it even says it right here if you want to take a look at it and it is ink which is really really great so that it's not going to pick up if you put anything near it that is wet. Okay, uh, and then finally, you are going to need to have a 5x5 five five tile. Now, I've made my own 5x5 five five tiles here. Um, I picked up a really nice heavy card stock that I thought might be really effective for this. And I want to talk about it just for a quick second before we even start class. And that is that you're going to need to cut the internal pieces. And how that works is, I'm just going to make this nice and close so that you can see it here. I didn't cut all the way to the corner on the diagonals, but on the other sides I did. So you can see that these have been cut fully but on this side and this side, they have not, so that when you go to actually bend the piece, it turns, which is really great, okay? All right, so that's what you're gonna need for class. Let's get ourselves centered and ready to go. Okay, so taking a comfortable seated position, however that best works for you inside your body here, we're going to do a little meditation. If you've never done one of my videos before, this is a really nice way to get centered before we tangle. So go ahead and sit nice and deeply into your chair, letting your back body rest against the back of the chair here, and then making a connection with your feet on the floor. Allow your spine to grow comfortably tall here. Let your shoulders melt away from your ears. And when you feel ready, allow your eyes to close. Taking a moment to notice the sounds around you. And then noticing the sound of your own breath as it rolls in and as it rolls out. On the inhale, feeling the expansion of the breath inside the body. On the exhale, feel the release of the breath in the body. On the inhale, feel the expansion. And on the exhale, feel the release. Taking three more of these breaths right here, inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Expanding. 
and releasing. Allowing the entire body to be at ease, softening in the chest and in the belly, letting go through the thighs and the calves and the hips. Letting go through the ankles and the feet. Softening in the shoulders and the upper arms, the elbows and the forearms. Relaxing through your hands. Feeling the breath roll in. Feeling the breath roll out all the while feeling relaxed and at ease. I'm just taking a moment to make a mental snapshot of the body right now, noticing where you feel relaxed inside your body, in your belly, in your chest, maybe in your throat. And just acknowledging where relaxation is present. And then when you feel ready, beginning to wiggle in your fingertips and wiggle in your toes and know that you can always come back here just by deepening in your breath and letting go. Gently blinking your eyes open and let's begin to tangle. Okay, so things to know about the project here, because this is a double-sided project and because both sides are the same, uh, I will be doing one side of the project with you and then you can either go back to the beginning and start again or you could do something completely different on the other side if you wanted to, just to play. So I will be showing you one side on the piece and then we'll be going from there, okay? So I'm going to just let this guy go and put him off to the side and we are going to get ourselves started. So you can see that I have my 5x5 five five tile here that I've created and what I've done is when I've cut into the piece I've left a border of about an inch on here so you can see that's about an inch in there and I've gone all the way around except for the upper corner here and the lower corner down here. So you want to remember that on the diagonal here, you're going to leave those attached. And what I've done is I've left them attached about a quarter of an inch so that I've got enough room to bend without tearing. Okay. And you don't want to press too hard with it. You want to make sure that you're being pretty gentle with it. Okay. So with that said, you can also see that I put in some holes in the corners here and that can be for where you do your beading or you could add a string um, so that it's held in place. You know, it's really up to you how you want to embellish. You could put, you know, just a little bead right on one side. I just happened to have some extra beads lying around um, and I what I used was some wire, some beading wire and crimper, um, crimper beads to hold it on there okay so taking that off to the side and we are just going to go ahead and get ourselves started there's no need for a pencil on this one because we are pretty much uh we pretty much got our string going for those of you who have done the final rows uh video this will seem as though it is uh familiar so that's always a good thing to have a little bit of uh, remedial tangling in there just so that you get really strong with the tangle. I'm going to start with spin rows um, and you can take what you need from it and leave the rest. So I've got my piece and I'm turning it so that it is on the diagonal here. And I'm just going to go ahead in the right hand side. I'm going to make a nice size circle about the size of a half dollar here so you can see that I'm just going for it and then I'm going to blow this up so that you can really see what I'm up to 
And this one, like the other uh, final rows, is going to have a little bit of its own uh, flow to it. So you may decide that, um, you know, things don't fit the same on your tile as they do on mine. So long as you can throw the tangle in there, that's really all that matters. So to begin, what we're going to do is we are going to start by doing the spin. And the spin looks a little something like this. So I'm going to start up at the top here. And I'm just going to come down towards this side and I'm going to pause. Then I'm going to go across just like so. Now I'm going to come back up, but watch, I'm not going to come back to the corner. I'm going to go off to the side a little bit. So this is where it starts to act like paradox a little bit. If you've not done that tangle, it will um, be a great one for you to practice later on. So I'm off center here. That was the corner. Now I'm down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go down. So I'm not going to the corner over here. I'm coming off center. And then I'm going to go ahead and come off center again. Notice that I'm not going to the corners. I'm staying off center. Then I'll come right back up again, off center. And then I'm going to go right back around. Last one right here. Now, once I've come to that point and I'm finished with it, I'm going to go ahead and add a little spiral in towards the center. And notice how the spiral is hitting all the sides here. And I'll add a little, uh, what do we call it, a little fescue in the middle. Okay, so that is the spin rows. If you need to rewind, you can always go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on going. You can pause me here if you want to pause. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to make the outer pieces of the spin rows. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to come up towards the top here. I'm going to make a dot here and I'm going to make a dot here. And I'm going to go ahead and come up a little bit, about a half an inch, and I'm going to make a wavy line and I'm going to pretend that I'm connecting. Notice how I had a little area there in my cut where I had to fall off the page and that's okay. So I'm just using that as my petal here. I'm going to come to the bottom. I'm going to do two dots right over here. I'm going to come down, make a wavy line and connect just like so. Now I'm going to do the sides. I'm going to make one dot here and one dot here and I'm going to make a wavy line connecting those two dots. And then finally, I'll put a dot over here. We're going to just pretend that the petal is out here. I'm going to come up and out, make a wavy line, and just fall right off the page. So there's our spin rows. And if you want to do more petals, you're more than welcome to, but I'm just going to keep on flowing here. If you need to pause me, this is a great place to pause me. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep on going. So the next one that I'm going to do is going to be a little bit of a smaller circle. So you can see this one is more, I'm going to say about the size of a nickel or a quarter. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to do that spin now. So I'm going to come down, come over, back and up. Notice how I'm not going to hit the corner. I'm going to go off center. Coming down, over. Notice how I'm not going to the corners. I'm going off center here off center and off center. Now I'm going to add my little spiral in there. Notice how it's hitting all sides and I'll put my little uh, teardrop at the end of it there or my fescue and now we're going to do the petals and what I love about this is that we're kind of smushing our roses together which is really kind of a nice uh, composition. I'm going to go ahead and do my two dots I'm going to come up and out and do a nice wave. I'll come over here and make a dot. I'm going to make my wave. Now notice it's going to holly bar or it's going to go underneath that rose there, which gives it kind of the overlap and underlap. Yeah. And then I'm going to come up here, make a dot and make a dot. And then I'm going to do a wavy line and connect coming over here making a dot. I'm going to make that wavy line, but there's nothing to connect to, so I'm just going to let it look like it's underneath, which is what I was going for. And then finally, I'm going to do a nice little one right under here. 
So I'll come in, and this one's more about the size of a dime. And I'm going to blow this up so that we can remember how we, um, we did our piece here. Oops, I think that's as far as I can blow that up. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do the spin. So I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going off center there. See how that went off center? Then I'm going to go again. Off center, off center, off center, and then I'll make my little spiral right in the middle. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the petals around that little rose there. So I'm going to go right here, and then I'll go right over here, I'm underlapping, and now I'll go again right here and right here, nice wavy line, and then right over here I'll do another wavy line. Now I feel like that rose is a little bit small, so I'm going to go ahead and add some extra petals in here. So this is where your artistic eye will kind of come in and you'll say, oh, well, I think I want to do a little bit more here and a little bit more there. Um, so it's really up to you how far you want to go with this. I'm just going to give this guy a little bit more zing to it. And that's really fun. It kind of looks like he's got a little bit more going on. So now I'm going to zoom out and you can really see how I'm just hugging that whole right side of the inner tile here, that inner cut. And you can see that, you know, I have the the part that's attached and I'm working on that diamond so that I can turn and the roses will look really nice there. Okay, so here's a great place to pause me and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so Hopefully you've had a chance to catch up to us here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our sindhu. And I'm just going to turn my tile now so that my roses are on the bottom. And one of the things that I love about Zentangle is no matter how you turn it, it always looks really neat. So uh, that's what we've got going on there with, uh, with our Zentangle. So all I'm going to do for this particular part is I'm going to make a little sindhu right off of this smaller rose right over here. And I'm going to make a dot right about here, and that's going to let me know where I need to be. And I'm just going to blow that up so that you can really see it. And from that dot, I'm just going to do kind of a bowed uh, a line, almost like an A. So I'm going to come in here, and then I'm going to come over here, and it almost looks like a bowed A. Yeah? So then, once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and right in the middle, I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to make a little dot here, and I'm just going to do a wavy S, or like a very lazy S, yeah? And then I'm going to do the same thing underneath. This is a variation on Sindhu that I've been doing. And then once you have that, I'm going to come inside of that little shape. You can see it almost looks like a leaf in there, doesn't it? So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come in and aura inside of the shape. And then I'll aura inside of that shape. And there's my Sindhu, which I really love. I just think it's got such a classy look for a leaf. I just think it's beautiful. So now we're going to do a couple more. So you can see I've got this small guy right over here. And what I think I'll do is I, I'll do two little leaves poking off here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do one dot over here and one dot over here. And they're going to probably vary in size. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do that arced A right here and another one right here. I'll go ahead and I'll come down about a quarter of an inch, make that wavy line, and then I'll do the other wavy line. And then I'm going to come in an aura here, and then I'll come over here and I'm going to aura. I've got that nice kind of fun aura going on over here, and I'm auraing actually part of the rose too, which really makes that interesting, I think. Then I'm going to come over and do this last one right here. So I'm going to do this arced A right here. And then I'll go ahead and I will go inside of it down about a quarter of an inch, make that wavy S. Then go ahead and aura. And then I'll aura over here too. 
And there are our sin dues. If you need to pause me here, this is a great place to do it. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a sand swirl. Sand swirl was one of the first Zen tangles that I ever learned. And it was one of my favorite ones that we ever did. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start with this guy right here. I'm going to use him as a guiding point. I'm going to come into where there's like a little bit of an arc here. You can see there's almost like a V. And I'm just going to jut out from there. And I'm going to go ahead and make my little fescue on the end there. And I'll puddle it in. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do another one. You can see I'm going to leave some space between the two here. Yeah. And then finally I'm going to have another one that comes down from the top. Now the way my teacher taught me was that you go around to each one and do something um, with it. So I'm going to start with the middle one first since I want it to be the one that's on top. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start underneath my fescue here and I'm just going to aura around my fescue. And I'm going to come down and out. Then I'm going to come up to this guy and I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'll come over here and I'll do the same thing. Now I'm going to come back to this guy. And I'm just going to go ahead and loop around. And then I'll come over here. Now I'm going to underlap a little bit. And then I'll come over here and I'll do it again. So I'm going to come around. Get that in there. Coming around again. And then I'll keep playing and seeing how far I want to go with it. So I'm just going to play and do a couple more. What fun. And I think that's pretty much where I'm going to go with that. So go ahead and play with your sand swirl, and then we'll meet you in a minute. Okay, so the final piece for the internal uh, tangle here that we have is I'm going to throw in some tipple. And those of you who know me, who've taken class with me, you know I love this tangle. It's one of my favorites. And one of the most important things about tipple is that you want to vary the size of them. If they're all the same, it, it's a little, in my opinion, it, it's just a little drab and a little bit boring to the eye. So I'm going to come into this area right over here, and I'm going to do a fairly large tipple that's going to hit both of those sindhus there. Now I'm going to do a medium tipple. And then I'm going to do a little baby tipple right in here. So you can see they're a little bit different in their size here. Now I'm going to come over in here and throw one in here. So I'll go ahead and I'll do a fairly large tipple. And then I'll go ahead and do a medium sized tipple. And now I'm going to do a teeny tiny little tipple right there. I, I love to put them in random places just because I think they really add to the piece. Here's another place where I can put it. And then I'll do my medium and then I'll do a teeny tiny little guy right there. So you can see that I'm just kind of going around and being pretty random about where I'm putting it. I just think tipple fills the space and it gives it such a, a sweetness, you know. I feel like there's a little bit more that I can do up in here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do one more set right here. So there you have it. So go ahead and do as many tipple as you want to do. Uh, you can pause me here. Otherwise, I'm going to start to talk about puddling. So you do what you need to do. And I'm just going to keep on rolling. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to puddle and 
what I feel about puddling is, is that it takes an area that might look a little busy, like this one does look a little busy and towards the center there's a lot going on, and it's going to define the space. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my pit pen, and I'm just going to start to fill in the space in between the sand swirl and the sindhu and the tipple with a little bit of puddling. And all puddling means is you are puddling in the space with ink. You're filling in the space with ink in here. So you can see that I'm just going through and adding that in. And then I'll come around out here and I'll start to add some of that into the space in here. One of the things that I love about this pen is that it gives me these really nice broad strokes, but then I can also do these really small little spaces. So if you haven't checked out the Pit Pen by Faber-Castell, uh, you might want to check it out. It's a really great pen. I know, I know, as if you need any more pens. Child, please. Everybody can use more art supplies. <laughs> All right, so you can see that I'm going around all the way around here and getting in there with that black ink, which is so lovely. So you go ahead and fill in your space. I'm going to go ahead and fill in mine, and I'll meet you back here in a minute or so. Take your time. Don't hold your breath. Really just open up and let that breath flow easily and relax your shoulders. Remember, we're doing this as a form of meditation. It's a relaxation. So if you catch yourself in a tightened stance, see if you can soften. All right? I'll see you soon. Okay, so here we are. And I think we're just going to start with zonked, our, uh, our corner tangles first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here into this corner right here. And you can see that this is a nice long line in here. And I'm just going to extend that line out. So all I'm doing is just very gently extending that line out. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just extending the line out. I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm just extending the line and then extending the line. Now I'm going to turn the tile again and I'm going to extend the line again. So here I go, right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and extend it down here, coming up and over here and up and over here. So now we should have in four corners here our, uh, our areas in which we're going to do zonked. And so zonked is a really fun one. I really love this tangle. It's one that I have fallen in love with because of, uh, because of Inktober. I didn't realize I do it a lot, but I just don't remember the names of tangles most of the time. So I'm really trying to get better at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do what we call blessing, blessing the square here. So I'm just going to come down from the corner on the diagonal here, and then I'm just going to go across just like so. Now, if you've ever done Enzeppel before, this is the same principle of, of Enzeppel. So you can see now I have these four triangles that are all facing in towards the center here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round off the edges. So all I'm going to do is I'll just go and round that off. And then I'm going to round this one off. Then I'll round off over here and then I'll round off over here. And you'll notice that that gives me a square right in the center. Now you could take your pit pen and come in and puddle with your pit pen, or if you feel more comfortable puddling in with your, uh, your PN or the, uh, the Prisma uh, Pigma pen, that's fine too. Rather, the Sakura uh, pen. So once you have that little square in the center here, we're going to start to build out from there. And I want to make this a little bit bigger, but my phone's not letting me doing it today. So there it is. Okay, 
So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to aura the line that I have. And then I'm going to aura one more time. And then I'm going to take some of that tip off here by weighting the triangle here. And I'm, I am going to puddle with my, uh, my Pigma pen here. And then I'll do it again right here. So you can see that it really develops a beautiful pattern. I just love this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my tile to make it easy for my hand here and I'm going to do it all over again. So I'm auraing that line right there. So I'm just going to come in and aura and I'll aura one more time. Put a little weight on the tip. Another little weight on the tip. And then I'm going to do it on this side. So I'll just come in and I'll aura from this side. And I'll do it again. Put a little weight on the tip. And another little weight on the tip. And then I'll finally do the top. So here I am at the top, coming down and in, down and in, weighting the tip, getting a little bit of that heaviness there, and another one right there. And there you have it. So that is zonked. So you're going to go into the rest of your corners and let's zoom out here. You're going to go into the rest of your corners and you're going to do the exact same thing. All right. So go ahead, have fun, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay. So we are going to keep on rolling here. You can see I've done my zonked in all of my corners here, and I think it's coming along quite nicely. So what we're going to start to do is we're going to start to work with the central channel here. So I want you to look at the space in between your zonked and then you see that central channel in there. All we're going to do is we're going to make a little dot where we think the middle is. So that's where I think my middle is and I'm just going to blow this up so you can really, really see it. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a line from that dot that goes straight up. And then I'm going to aura that line about I think it's probably about a half an inch. And then I'm going to aura it again on the other side. And this is the beginning of our J. Louise. And I actually had to do my due diligence and find out where the heck this little tangle came from. Turns out there's a great little tangler out in, um, in Germany. Her name is Stephanie Kukla. And um, she said that J. Louise is the French word for Venetian blind. And she said that she saw um, a blind in a store where the little tassel was hanging down with a little uh, bead at the end of it and she got the idea for a tangle so you never know where you're going to see something that inspires you so thank you Stephanie that's very very cool um, and this particular tangle was part of Inktober so uh, that's why I became familiar with it and it's a great border tangle so now that we've got these two little pieces in here all I'm going to do is I'm going to make one line here and then I'm going to do another one right here and then I'll come over to this side. So I'm alternating now. I'm going to go over to this side and do the same. And then I'm going to do the Venetian blind with the bead at the end of it, right? The string with a little bead. And then I'll do the same thing over here. So it has that really nice alternating feel to it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to puddle those guys in just like so. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go around to each of these little quadrants here and we're going to put in our J. Louise. Let's do one more together just so that we've really got it, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find where I think the middle space is and I'm going to make a dot. So I'm just looking in between here and seeing where I think the middle is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a line straight up. I'm going to do an aura about a half an inch out and then I'll do another aura a half an inch out. Now we're going to do two lines. So one here and one here. 
then I'll alternate and I'll do one here and one here. Now we're going to do our little line with the bead. So there's the line, here's the bead. We'll puddle it in and then we'll go up and we'll do it again. So go ahead and do that over here and over here and we're going to get ready to do some color pretty soon. See you soon. All right, so I've had a chance to go all the way around and we're going to start with our roses here and begin to bring color into the piece here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is uh, that your color pencil is three different colors all in one. So if you've never done this with me before, I'm just going to do a quick little demo. So your color pencil is your light, your medium, and your dark. So you can really see the difference between all three, and I really want you to keep that in mind as we work today, uh, that you're going with light, medium, and dark, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take that off to the side here, and we are gonna start in a really kind of off way, even though I know you're gonna feel like, oh, I don't wanna do that, we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna go all the way through the roses with that light tension. Now I want you to notice how far back I am on that pencil. I'm not up here, this is for detail work. I'm back here. I am just going to go ahead and lay down color very, very lightly in here, and you can see that I'm working kind of in a circular-like fashion and I'm just, I'm not even giving a care that I'm going over the lines, I'm just going right through it. So I'm just laying down color in the lightest way possible. I'm making sure that I'm just going right through and using that circular like motion. And let me just bring this up nice and close so that you can really see what I'm up to here. So that pencil is working in a circular like motion. I'm way back on the pencil because I'm not doing detail work. And I'm just laying down a very, very light, light color. And I wanna make sure that that color is nice and smooth. So if you're seeing little scratch lines, you wanna just make sure that you go in and just keep going over the top of it. And I don't mean put pressure on it, just keep working it. You can see that I'm just going all the way around that rose in a very uh, non-systematic way. It's just very loose and very easy. It's got a little bit of flow to it. And you can see that I'm just kind of trying to get those lines to soften. So once I feel like I've gotten a good amount of color down, I'm going to start to put a little bit more pressure on my pencil here. So notice how I'm climbing up on the pencil a little bit more. I'm not up here, I'm just back here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more pressure on that pencil, and you can see that it's working in that circular like motion, and all I'm doing is I'm staying right behind this black line. Can you see there's this line right here? I'm just staying right behind it. And I'm just giving it a little bit more pressure. Once I've got that pressure going, I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit more pressure. Now notice how I climbed up on that pencil. Now I'm up at the top and I'm doing my detail work. So I'm going to go in and add now that intensity right on that black line that I have. And this will give the color a bit of glow. Isn't that beautiful? These color pencils just want to do exactly what you ask. Isn't that great? So I'm going to go around now and I'll start to work over here. So I backed up a little bit on my pencil because I'm only doing the medium tension here. I'm not doing the heavy tension. And you can see that that pencil is working in a circular like motion. I don't want a hard line. I want kind of a soft line. So I'm really trying to be imperfect about my shading. You can see that I'm trying to soften up that line out there. Now I'm going to go again and I'm climbing up on that pencil a little bit more and now I'm going to go and do a really, really heavy, heavy line right around that black. See how that petal is starting to gain a little bit of intensity? So I'll come back over here and do the same thing. So I'm just going around 
working in that circular like motion, giving a little bit more intensity to the, co the color. And then once I've done that, I'll soften up my edges a little bit. And now I'm going to come in and do that intense work, that really nice, beautiful, intense red right around the rose. And you can see that it's already starting to develop quite nicely, yeah? So I'm just turning and doing the same thing. Putting in that medium tension. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it that intensity that I'm looking for. Now once I get into the inside in here, I'm going to change things up a little bit. I'm just going to go into the corners here and give it a little bit of medium tension. And then I'll do the same thing over here, but notice how I'm leaving that central area light. Now, once I've done those corners, I'm going to go in and give it a little bit more intensity. And you can see that that gives a little bit of dimension to the petal. Yeah. So I'm going to turn my tile and I'll start to work the corner again. And then a little bit more over here. Coming in and giving that a little bit of intensity. Same thing over here. A little bit of intensity. So you can see that I'm just building it from side to side until I really get what I'm looking for. And you know, this is where your artistic eye is really going to come in and you're going to see it and go, okay, I know what I need to do here. And then finally, I'll just keep moving in towards the center. And when things start to get a little bit smaller, you won't have as much work to do. It won't be as much busy work it becomes a little bit less intense, yeah? And you can see I'm not being overly perfectionistic about it because Mother Nature is not overly perfectionistic about it either. If you've ever seen roses, they don't open quite uh, so perfectly, yeah? So now, you're probably thinking, well, what about that orange that you were talking about? So there's a rose in my garden that I absolutely love. It's called Perfect Moment, and it is red with a blush of orange on the edges. So I'm going to actually take my orange here and just start to push a little bit of that orange onto the outer edge and start to blend in some of that orange with the red. Now you could do this with purples and pinks. You could do this with blues um, and purples. I've seen, you know, blue roses. They do have them. Um, and they usually have like a hue of purple to them, which is really fun. So, you know, feel free to blend your colors and do different things with it. You could even do yellow and orange, which is totally beautiful. So just think of colors that really work for you. So you can see how beautifully that orange starts to build off of that. And then I can come in here and just add just a little blush of it on that inner channel just to give it some interest. Okay, so that's the rose. So you're going to have these two other roses to work with. So go ahead and do your roses and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go around with the roses. We'll circle back to the roses a little bit later with some white pen to add some fine detailing. Um, but for right now, we're going to let that go. We're going to come over here to our sindhus. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with inside of the aura here. So I'm going to go ahead with this really nice olive green that I have. And I'm going to start with the lightest tension first. And I'll start to lay down that color inside of the auras. I'll come in here as well. And 
and then over here. And then I'm going to start to add a little bit of that darker tension. So notice how I'm jumping up here and giving this a little bit more intensity. Let me blow this up here so that you can really see what I'm up to. So you can see that I'm actually giving that a little bit more intensity so that I get a little bit of shadow from the rose onto the leaf itself. I'm going to come in over here and do the same thing where I just get a little bit of shadow in here. And then finally right in here as well. I'll come around to this other one and do the same thing. So I'm just laying down that light color first. Nice light color in here as well. And then I'll go ahead and I'll add some of that intensity into the piece. So go ahead and do all of your sindhus like that. And then we're gonna come back with a darker color to go inside of our lines here. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go through there. Now I've got this really nice darker forest green. This is going to give me a little bit of a contrast inside the piece here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just start to lay down some of that darker green into those pieces here. So I've got this little area right in here. And then watch, I'm going to leave this one alone, but I'm going to come into this piece right here. So you can see that I've laid that down. Now I'm gonna add a little bit darker green right on the edges here, just to give this a little bit more dimension. And I'll do the same thing right in here. And then I'm gonna come over to the next one and do the same thing. So here I go, laying down just a little bit of that light green Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do right in here as well. I'm going to skip this one right here and come right into this one. And you can see that that leaves me this really nice little line in there. We're going to come back to that in a minute because you know me, I like to carry my colors and we're going to use that color in a minute. So then I'm going to come into this last piece and do this last one right over here. Getting in there. A little bit of darkness. Same thing right here. And a little bit of darkness. So go around, finish those up, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I am going to be using a little bit of gray in this piece. One of the things that I love to see is I love to see graphite with color. So you can see how beautiful that sand swirl turned out with the gray next to all that beautiful color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to very, very lightly now shade into my sand swirl. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to be right here on the ends. And then I'm going to come up here and do a little bit right in here. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a little white in that central channel right in there. Now, I'm also going to come into this area right here where the sand swirl rejoins itself and I'm going to do the very same thing. Now notice I'm just using a very, very light tension. I'm not using a heavy tension at all. So once I've got that nice light color in there, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to come further up onto my pencil and now I'm going to start to use that medium tension. And then I'll use a really, really dark, heavy tension right near the rose itself. Now when I get up in here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use a medium tension. And 
and then I'm going to come back and use a heavier tension right in towards where the sand swirl rejoins itself. So I'll turn my tile and I come in right over here. Same thing, coming up using that nice light tension. Then I'll do a medium tension and a dark tension right along the rows. See where that sand swirl rejoins itself? We're going to do the same thing right here. So I go light first. Notice how I'm leaving a little bit of light in here where the other sand swirl is. Now I'm going to go medium tension. And then I'll go really dark just along that line just to give it a little bit of drama. I might even come up in here and add a little bit of gray, just a touch. So you can see that it's starting to develop a really nice shading in here. Same thing in here, coming up where the corner is, going about halfway up. Now I'm going to go ahead and add that medium tension in there. And then finally the heaviest tension. Now see where that sand swirl is joining? I'm going to come in and let it have that nice light tension. And then I'll let it have that medium tension. And then finally the heaviest tension. Now for those of you um, who are wondering about the gray pencil that I'm using, I'm using this in lieu of graphite because I'm left-handed. I always end up wearing the graphite on my hand. So if you've got a nice gray pencil in your pencil set, go ahead and grab it. Now that is how to do our really, really nice sand swirl. But I also was talking about Sindhu earlier. And so I'm gonna take that graphite and put it inside of the Sindhu so I'll do light first, then I'll go medium on the sides, and then I'll do nice and dark on the sides. And you can see that that adds a really nice contrast. So go ahead and finish up your Sindhu, do your uh, sand swirl, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've had a chance to go around and now we're going to go ahead and start to work with the tipple here. I've got two colors that I'm going to use for that. I have this really nice light purple and then I've got a nice violet that I'm going to work with. So let's blow up on those tipples here and take a look. So I'm just going to come in and start to shade in with that nice lavender and you can see that I'm working in a nice circular like motion. And you'll see that I'm only going to fill in about three quarters of the way of that tipple, that bubble there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to use a little bit of that medium tension on it. And you can see that once I've got that medium tension going, I'm going to go ahead and grab that violet and bring that violet to the outside edge so that I really just get this kind of nice smoky look on that bubble there. And then I'm just going to very, very lightly bring that up over the top. So it kind of gives it a really nice orb like feeling. So I'm going to move through and do all the tipple that way. So I've got this really kind of soft, smoky feel going through. And then I'll just do all of my lights first. So I'm going light, light, light all the way through. And then once I've had that opportunity, I'll come back in with that medium tension, same pencil. Medium tension, same pencil. And then once I'm ready to work with that, I'll grab that violet and bring that violet into the outside edge. like so. So go ahead and finish up your tipple and we'll meet back here in a minute. See you soon. Okay, so I've had a chance to finish those up. Now we're going to start to do what I call carrying color and if you've done uh, some Zen Tangle work with me before you know that I like to take color that has been in one part of the tangle and move it to the outer part of the tangle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rose color that I have here 
and I'm going to bring it into a part of the J. Louise that we have. So I'm just going to go in and start to bring in some of that pretty orange color. It's like an orangish red color. And you can see that I'm working with the lightest color first. And then I'm going to start to fade out towards the edge. And then I'm going to start to add a little bit more pressure. So I'm putting in a medium pressure here. So I have that medium pressure going on. And then finally, I'll come back in with the heaviest pressure. And you can see, see that that's going to start to give me the vibrancy that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a brightness in there. Now, remember how I added a little bit of orange onto the outside of those petals? I'm going to grab that orange that I have and just bring it onto the outer edge just to bring a little bit of interest, almost to make it look like a watercolor, if you will. Once I've got that, I'm going to bring that around to every other one on this uh, on the square here. So I'll bring it over here, I'll bring it over here, and I'll bring it over here. Okay, so go ahead and go around and do the first color, your rose color, and your J. Louise. And we're going to save this for a different color uh, when we come back. I'll see you in a minute. Don't forget to breathe and enjoy yourself. See you soon. All right, so I've had a go around there. Now I'm going to add the second color in. So you can see that I'm going to take that tipple color and I'm going to bring it in right over here. So same technique that what we're going to do here. So we're just going to drop in with that light purple, almost like a lavender color. And we're going to just start to bring it around. Remember, we're keeping that pencil working in that circular like motion. That's going to give us that really soft, foggy, misty feel of color so that it doesn't look scratchy. It just looks soft. Now I'm going to come in with that medium tension and I'm going to come about halfway up with that medium tension here. So I'm just getting in there. And then once I've had a chance to get through that, I'll grab the violet and I'm just going to bring that violet nice and close to the black line just to give us a little bit of definition. And isn't that really nice how that just kind of gives it that soft fade out on the edge. So go around and do all of the uh, J. Louise's that you have left and then we're going to come back and we're going to work with graphite in those areas. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are. And now we're going to start to work inside the top of these. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with that nice soft gray. Now if you are a left-handed person, you may want to use a gray colored pencil from your color pencil set. Otherwise you could use just a regular graphite pencil. A number two is just fine. The only reason why I don't use them is because I'm left-handed and I end up wearing it on the side of my hand. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just coming in with this nice light gray color that I have here. And you can see that I'm just filling it in. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to start to do a little bit of medium tension coming about a quarter of the way in. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. But notice how I'm leaving that central channel a little bit lighter. So let me see if I can make this any bigger. There we go. I'm leaving it a little bit lighter in here. And now I'm going to add just a little bit more tension into the outside edge here. So I'm just getting in there, adding some more of that tension, and that really starts to give it kind of a, a very kind of industrial feel, which I love. It gives it kind of an interesting juxtaposition with the gray and the color itself. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing, going in with the light gray first, the lightest tension, and then finally we'll go ahead and do a little bit of that medium tension on either side. And then lastly I'll come in and I'll do that dark edge right on the outside edge. This is all pretty basic in the Zentangle shading coloring book, yeah? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go around and finish up all of these just like that. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm coming in here now and I'm going to start to work with these blank pieces. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, why aren't you putting any Zen Tangle in there? And sometimes it's really nice to have a quiet space for the eye to land if a Zen Tangle is very uh, busy or um, just needs a little bit of softness. So I'm going to take these same colors that we were working with and I'm going to do some shading techniques with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the orange first. Now I'm not going to work with the orange on this side. I want to have a little contrast so I'll work on it on the same side as the purple because because when I have the purple working against the orange, it's going to pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'll start to do some shading in the corner here, as you can see. And let's make this a little bit bigger for you so that you can really see it. So I'm starting with a really nice light tension here and getting right into the corner. And then I'll go to the other side and I'll do the other corner. Now, once I have that, with that nice light tension, I'll just start to fade off towards the center so that there isn't a hard line of demarcation. Then I'm going to come back into the corners and I'm going to do that medium tension. So I want to start to develop a little bit of that contrast that we're looking for. And then I'm going to come over here and do the exact same thing. So I'm starting to develop a little bit more of that intensity as well. And then finally, I'll come into this corner and I'll really start to give it that intensity of red that I'm looking for. Now, because I added a little bit of orange over to the other parts of this particular piece, I'm going to fade up with a little bit of orange. So I'll start to come in here and make it look like maybe a little bit of a watercolor just by fading out with a little bit of that orange in here. And the same thing up in here. I'm just starting in the lightest part and then I'm going to fade out with a little bit of that orange. And you can see that I'm kind of rolling back and forth between the two just to give it a little bit of a glow. And isn't that so pretty next to the purple, right? So you're going to go next to your purples and do that all the way around. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to add some of that red and it's really, really fun. I love the way that this is starting to look. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over into this corner and do the exact same thing, but with the purple. So I've got that light purple in my hand and I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill it in. And then I'll come over to the opposite side and I'll do the opposite in that corner. Let's get that nice and large so that you can really see that. So you can see that I'm really starting to fill this in and give this a lot of soft kind of foggy feel to it. And then I'm going to come in with that medium tension and start to fill that in. And I'll do the same thing right in here. And then finally I'm going to grab that darker violet and start to bring that into the corner here and really start to make it pop. And you can see that there's a little line of demarcation there, so I want to kind of soften it up a little bit. So I'm just going to go right in and just lightly roll that pencil through there. You can see that I'm just doing it in a really nice, soft, smoky way. And you'll notice that I'm breaking up that inner line. I don't want it to be hard. I want it to be kind of soft. So we're trying to get kind of an imperfect line in there. And you can see that I'm just going back and forth back and forth over the top of it. That's what creates that soft, smoky feel. You know, just going back and forth like this would give you a really hard line. So we want a really soft line. 
So you can see where I'm rolling with this. So you're going to go into all of the rest of your white pieces in here and finish that out, okay? And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so this is really coming along. So once again, I always like to carry my color. So you can see that I've got this really nice green inside of the leaf in here. And we're gonna carry that color over into Zonked. So what it's gonna look like is we're just gonna shade the outside edges of Zonked here with this really nice green. And you can see that I'm really far back on this pencil. I'm not up here doing detail work. I'm coming back on the pencil here just to give it some interest. And all I'm gonna do is do a really nice peripheral. And let's see if I can blow this up and make it nice and big. So we're just gonna start by doing what I call, this is Maria shading right here. Whenever I watch Maria, she always does this really nice perimeter shading. And so I always refer to it as Maria shading from Zen Tangle headquarters. So I'm just going in and adding a little bit of that green on the outside here. And then I'll come in and I'll try to give it a little bit of that medium tension just about halfway through that zonked there where the light is. So I'm leaving some of the light, but now I'm doing some of the medium in there. And then after I'm done with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of that darker green and bring that darker green into it. So I'll come in, grab that darker green, and just run it right along the edge to make it pop. So you can see I'm just getting in there and running it right along the edge. Hopefully I'm staying on camera while doing this. <laughs> So you can see that that really starts to give that quite a nice dimension just by having that darker edge on the outside. And if you decide you want to come in and blend in a little bit with that original color just to get that outside edge to soften a little bit, you can do that as well. You can see that I'm kind of running it over that a couple of times and then I'll come back in and start to make it nice and soft. And you can see that that light brings your eye right into the center of the piece, which is so nice. So go ahead and do that part. Go around and do all your zonked, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we've had a chance to finish up the exterior pieces. And the piece is looking really good. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So for those of you who saw the video on the Certified Zen Tangle Teacher site, you know that this is a double-sided project. So all I've done is gone to the other side here and done the exact same thing as I did on the first side. I just changed my color palette, which was really, really fun. Um, it's always fun to try a piece a second time because it never comes out exactly the same as the first side. So hopefully you'll go ahead and flip your tile over and finish your uh, piece up. Now what I wanted to talk about was the corners here. You know, um, the corners have little holes in them so that you can uh, go ahead and string up the piece so that it will spin when you turn it and you're able to move that internal piece a little bit more by turning it when you're finished. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a tutorial on how to do some beading here. So if you are interested in watching the tutorial, stay on with us. If you are not interested in the tutorial, I thank you for coming out and trying out this really fun tangle. I, I love this project. It's one of my favorite projects that I've done. Um, and if you're interested in anything that is Tangle Yogi related, you can always go to tangledyogi.com and visit me there. We have tiles and classes and all things Tangle Yogi related. All right. Please leave us a nice review or a good thumbs up to let everybody know that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for coming out. And if you want to stay tuned for the little video on beading, that's coming up next. Okay, so we're coming into the beading portion of the video here, and I just wanted to talk about the things that we're going to be using. I have this really nice beading wire that I got from Amazon. You can get this at any beading store as well. It's a nice soft 
beading wire. The other thing that I have is I have a needle nose pliers and I also have a little wire cutter. And then right in here I have an assortment of little beads. Now, I do have two beads in here that are pretty teeny tiny and small. These are called crimper beads. And these are going to be what hold the, um, the beads in place and help to seal off the wire so that the beads don't fall off. Crimper beads can be picked up at a beading store. I'm not sure if they have them at Amazon or not. You'd have to check into that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little beading wire here. I've cut a little bit of this and it's about the length of the piece itself. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to loop it through. So I'm just going to take it into the piece of my uh, paper and loop it through. So now both sides are now on that wire here. Okay, I'm going to hold on to both sides of the wire and I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those crimper beads. So they're really small so they can be a little bit difficult to handle. So you can see that I've got the crimper bead in my hand and I'm going to loop my little wire through it so you can see that it's right there on my finger. I'm going to take the other side of the wire now, so this side that's not in there, and I'm going to loop it through. Once I have it through, I'm going to slide it down so that I don't have any excess wire on the piece. And I want to make sure that I have just enough to keep it on there, which I do. So there you can see. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to smush that bead. So that's how the crimper bead works. You just give it a push and it flattens it out. Pretty neat. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that wire and I'm going to take one of my big glass beads and I'm going to loop it through on the wire here. And you'll see that I have a little bit of excess wire there. I'm going to take that excess wire and I'm going to loop it through the bead so that now it doesn't show at all. So I'll come back up and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a metal bead on just to inter, um, interweave these guys in. Oops. And as you can see, I'm not much of a beater. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab another glass bead. And I'm going to loop it through. And then finally, I'm going to take another wire, or rather another metal bead, and I'm going to poke that through the wire here, if it will let me. Oops! I'll go ahead and grab a different one. And then we'll do one final glass bead here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do one more metal bead. And I like these metal beads because they're really, really small so that when we put the crimper bead in it won't get swallowed by the, um, the actual uh, bead itself. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab one more of those little crimper beads. And you can see it's teeny tiny in my hand here. I'm going to go ahead and loop it through, just through the eye of the needle there. There's the crimper bead. You can see it on the line, right? I'm going to turn this wire back and down, and I'm just going to loop it right back through again. That way it will hold. And you can see that I'm kind of pulling on it to bring that bead down towards the other beads there. Once I've got that and I'm feeling pretty good about where it is, I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers here. And I'm going to squeeze that down. Now I've got another loop that's right here so that I can put a hook through it if I want to hang it or if I wanted to add a little another bead there, I could do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of the excess wire, but not all of it because we don't want it to go back and break in. So I'm just going to hold on to this. I'm going to give it a little crimp. And there you can see I have a little excess wire on it. Here's my loop. And then I'm going to go ahead and let it rest. So now I'm going to put it down on the table so that you can see what I'm up to here. It's almost as if you just made a little bit of a necklace. And then finally I'm going to take a little bit of a bead that I found that I thought would be a nice weighted bead and just put it on the edge. 
so that that way when the piece hangs it's got a little bit of uh, an edge at the bottom of it so you can see I've done one of those chains at the top and this little chain down at the bottom with my little bead hanging on it so that when I go to hang the piece now it's going to spin more easily because it's on a wire and it's much more easy to move so that you can hang it and let it move much more freely. So I hope that this was helpful. I know it is a little bit remedial, but if you've never done any kind of beading before, perhaps it'll give you a place to start. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really enjoyed doing it for you. Once again, this is Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. I'll see you next time.